We're now going to look at um, reading something that's been serialized and written to disk. Okay, so in the previous video, um, we saved a list of employees to disk. Um, since then, I've just commented out the code that was in the, the main method. And what I want to do instead is to write a method that is going to read my employees from disk. Okay, so we're gonna say, we're gonna create a method that um, returns an array list of employee. Uh, I'll call it load employees. Um, and you'll find that the process of, of doing this is very similar to the process of saving. Um, instead of creating output streams, we create input streams. So we'll create a file input stream from java.io. We'll call it file input stream. Uh, that's going to be a new file input stream. And we pass in the file that we used before. So if we remember when we saved it, we called it save.dat. We want to make sure that that matches exactly. Again, like when we try to write a file, we've got an exception, oops, sorry, an exception that can occur, which is a file not found exception. So in order to um, ensure that we um, deal with that, we need to add it to a try catch block. We'll catch the file not found exception. Uh, file not found and we'll just add that message on uh, to give us some more information. Um, like before, we had an object output stream. This time we'd have an object input stream. Yeah, you can probably guess that we passed the file input stream into the object input stream. Okay, and again, we've got another exception that can occur, which is a java.io exception. So just like before, we catch the io exception. We'll call it e. Uh, error um, converting uh, data to object. Um, it, one thing to bear in mind here is if we save something and then modify um, the object, uh, this thing we save. So, for example, we save our employee, and our employee's got a name and a um, start date of employment. If we come along and we modify the name of the variable or we add an additional field, um, it's then not going to um, not going to work. We've got to make sure we're reading the, the we don't change the, the employee type between saving and um, reloading to disk, uh, reloading from disk. So um, that's something that could go wrong there. Um, and then um, finally, what we need to do is to um, get our uh, data from file. Okay, so the way we do that is we ask our uh, object input stream to um, read an object. Okay, now what we don't have is a read array list of employee methods. That would be, you know, employee didn't exist until we started writing this program. So we read object. The problem is instead of giving us an array list of employees, it gives us an object. Okay. So what we have to do there, okay, one is, first of all, it looks like we've got an exception we've got to try and handle. So let's see what that is. Um, what's the exception? Tell me the exception. Uh, class not found exception. Okay, so we can catch class not found exception. So if we try and read in something for a class that doesn't exist, um, we'll get uh, that error. I just want to, uh, can't find class representing saved object okay but as we go back to this this gives us an object but i want to return an array list of employees now because i know that i saved an array list of employees i can do something called a cast and this is where i tell the um tell java that i know that this object is an array list of employees because you know when we saved it, it was an array list of employees so we can say actually treat it as an array list of employees and all we do there is to put the type of thing we want to treat it as um, in brackets beforehand now um, it's complaining now because i'm not actually assigning this to a variable so i could say something like array list of employee equals and then um, we need to give it a name, employees, okay. And then 
what it's doing is it's casting this, which is an object, to an erase of employee. If I take this away, okay, this makes it a little bit, it's probably easy to read, but it's going to complain. It's going to say, you're giving me an object and it should be an employee. It will actually give us the op option to cast it. It will say, do that, treat it as an employee, and then we're okay. Okay. It is warning us that we're not checking this, okay, but we know it is because we've saved it to this, so we can we cannot worry about that. So this will give us our employees, okay. Um, so we can then, for example, return uh, employees, okay. Now, um, we've still got a problem here in that this method doesn't return anything, okay. So if we fail, for example, we try and load employees before the file exists or something else goes wrong, we don't want our program to crash entirely, um, necessarily. I think, I mean, we could, we could just um, modify it so it throws the exception and the, the program ends. But I think what we do instead is if we get to this point, i.e. something's gone wrong, we'll return an empty list of employees. So all we do is return new array list of employee. So we just get an empty list if we fail to read from the file. So all I'd need to do now uh, to get this to work is I need to go back and I'd say, well, okay, we'll have an array list of employee. Um, and rather than making it a new array like we did before, we're going to load our um, employees, what do I call it? Load employees. I didn't make it static. Um, and we're working in a static method, so I've changed that. So we can load employees. That will put the employees from disk into this array list. If I then uncomment the code that prints them out, we should be able to run it and see that the um, employees that we saved in the previous session uh, are loaded back in. Okay, so we've got an issue here saying um, employee is not serializable. Uh, so it's likely that when I saved it previously, because I didn't resave it with the um, with it serialized, the save failed. Um, yes, you can see there's a ton of error in the save to that file. So in order to go back, what we'll do is we temporarily comment out the new code. We'll put back in the old code that will save the uh, employees to disk. We will run that again. Okay, so that should have saved successfully. We look here. Uh, yeah, we can see we've got date and time. So. Uh, that looks helpful. If we go back to our main class, we'll comment that back out. We'll comment this back in and we'll run it again. And it should load what we've saved from disk. There we go. So we know we just we just saved it, we changed it, and then we reloaded it and we're getting that data back in. Um, now, um, I think that's, uh, there's probably just one thing to add and that is, um, sometimes we might decide that for whatever reason there's a field that belongs to a class that we don't actually want saved if we save it to disk okay maybe it's something that only matters when the application is running um, and isn't something we want to store uh, long term okay and if that is the case so we didn't want to store let's say what might we have um, uh, let's say let's say we had some kind of string that represents um, a vehicle uh, on loan and, and this only exists when the program is, is running. Um, we can add a keyword transient, okay, it's not going to tell us, but what this will mean is that um, this is not stored to disk when we uh, serialize our, our program, okay. So it wouldn't then be loaded back in uh, when we um, when we read back from this, it wouldn't be stored, it wouldn't be reloaded, okay? So if you want to avoid something being serialized, you can use this keyword uh, transient. Okay, and that's um, reload, well, that's uh, reading serialized data back from disk.